Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play the great strategy games. We are currently doing a Let's Play tutorial for AG Odds Civil War II, one of the great grand strategy games that covers the American Civil War. Uh, this is episode number four. Um, in the first three episodes we covered a lot of the basics. We covered all of our various stats up here, things we need to track. We talked about playing cards. We looked at the databases. We talked about raising troops, which we will definitely be doing a lot more of and get more practice doing that. Talked about national morale, and we talked about our messages down here. Now we're almost ready to do a new turn, and I do want to get these turns going. You know, the first, first few episodes we've gone through how to play the game, uh, and now I really want to start focusing on playing, actually playing the game. So let's go up here to our database. Uh, well, before we do that, let's talk about what we've done this turn. Uh, we're going to have our Suffolk militia here go over to Norfolk and take the major uh, naval base there at Norfolk, which the Union uh, has abandoned. And we can tell that because there are no ground troops here at all. Uh, we are also going to have our militia up here in Winchester do the same at Harper's Ferry. Now we control this. The uh, Union abandoned it. We got a message saying they've abandoned Harper's Ferry, so our people up here at Harper's Ferry just took it. But we're going to go put a little force here. Now we talked about movement last time and how that works. Uh, I guess I had clicked off this. Let's, let's move them by rail. There we go. So it's going to take one day. You see the locomotive. Take those guys one day to get up there. We've got them in a defensive defend and retreat posture. So, you know, we're not going to go to the last man standing up here at Harper's Ferry. We're going to go up, put a little nice militia there, let the Union know that we're serious about, about holding that, but we're not going to do much else. Now, we still have Beauregard down here at Fort Sumter. He's besieging that. We're hoping hoping we've got him in an assault posture. We're hoping that Beauregard decides this turn to take the fort. Now that's how this game works. You give your generals um, and you give your troops general ideas of what you want them to do. In this case, you know, if we click on him, we've got him in an assault posture, which is the most aggressive. We want him to be very aggressive. Now, we have not ordered that he do an all-out attack. I find that that can be risky if you get a bad dice roll. Uh, you, that can chew up some units. No reason to do that. We are going to take Fort Sumter one way or another. There's The Union just doesn't have much there to defend it. So we've got that a sustained attack. Uh, we've played our cards this turn. We're developing some territory. We've uh, bankrolled some demonstrations up here in the north. So, you know, if we come back up here, we've bankrolled some demonstrations. Uh, you can see those where these cards have been played in Alexandria, uh, up near Baltimore. I think this is actually in Annapolis, and it is uh, in Arendelle, uh, Maryland. Um, so we're going to do some demonstrations to kind of cut Union loyalty here. That will reduce supply. It could chew up a rail line, as we've seen here. Um, we've exported some bales of cotton, so all of those things have happened. So when you get near an end of a turn, you want to go look at your atlas, and we are going to click on, click to hide all fixed forces, so these are actually the only forces left in the game, I say left, that are in the game that we can control to move at this moment. Uh, everything else is locked. So this game, the mechanism is, you know, it may be building up, it may be, they may be recruiting and uh, giving troops supplies and ammunition and doing all that, but you can't move them until they're ready to go. So they're considered locked. Uh, these are the unlocked items. Now we've we've looked at almost all of these. The division generals and the general's pool that's sitting in Richmond, there's nowhere for these guys to go. If we were being super aggr aggressive and kind of playing a little gamey, we could send them out west, the guys that we want out west, and go ahead and do that. Um, just because we know we're going to do that eventually, but that's a little gamey. We're not going to do that. 
Uh, we got our, our army at Sumter. Now you start to see Carolina Runners, Gulf Squadron. You know, what is all of this? Well, let's click off land units. Uh, now we just have naval units. These are units we have not done anything with yet. Um, so let's go to the Carolina Runners. Uh, what does this mean? These guys can be blockade runners. So you see the Huntress Squad Brigade. We're going to click on that. We're going to go over here and look at its elements. This is the CSS Aitken. Uh, it's one of two ships in this Huntress Squadron. So the Huntress Squadron Brigade you see here. Uh, we've got the Aitken here. It's a very fast ship. It has a uh, full supply level, full health. Um, and as you can tell, it's called the Carolina Runners. We're probably gonna try to run the blockade with this. And indeed we are. So how do we do that? How do we take these guys and have them run this blockade? We well, see out here, here's the Atlantic blockade. We see this 35%. So we know the Union is active here, but we just don't know how much. Uh, we don't have any visibility into that. Here are the shipping lanes. Uh, this is all based on the north, right? So shipping lanes. This area is a shipping box representing the main transit areas of merchant ships. Some factions can increase their income by adding more transport ships to the box. Um, you know, this additionally, this will increase the high seas transport pool. As you can see, this is really focused on the north. Um, these are their shipping lanes, and we do have, you know, ships that can go out and try to maraud these, but mainly we're going to be using most of our ships to run the blockade. Uh, the South just does not have the kind of Navy uh, that it would take to uh, compete with the North in any kind of sustained combat out on the high seas, so most of our ships, we want them to avoid Northern ships and run the blockade. Um, so the enemy can try sinking these merchant vessels by sending fast ships against them, what we call commerce raiders. This won't earn any income, but it upsets enemy shipments. Uh, okay, it takes one day to get out here. It's in the fog of war. Now let's read about Atlantic blockade. This area is a blockade box. Some factions can increase the opponent's blockade level percentage shown on the bottom uh, of the blockade box. So we saw that, 35%. The Union's blockading us. Um, the enemy can receive more income by sending light ships, blockade runners, uh, that sounds familiar, into these boxes. They will earn income each turn they survive the presence of the opponent's ships. So we have these guys, the Carolina runners, uh, the Huntress squadron. We are going to uh, pick them up from that index and put them right here. Excellent. So we've got some guys out here trying to run the blockade. We are going to set them to green and green. Uh, we want them to evade everything they can. And there's a further special order down here. So here are your special orders. Uh, always click on these, you know, to see what you can do with certain units. There's nothing we can do, you know, uh, with special orders related to building de and destroying. I mean, these are ships, right? Nothing we can do uh, organizing armies, promoting general. That just doesn't matter. What we can do is, say, evade combat. This is what you always want to do. This order is used to try to evade na enemy naval patrols in the seas and rivers traversed during a move. So we're going to put them out here. We're going to try to get them... Um, evading this blockade and we're going to do that with this special order and have that on okay so that's how we we do that out here what else do we have so we looked at the carolina runners what's the gulf squadron okay this is down here um in new orleans so what are these guys lewis cast squadron i think we've got the exact same thing here right We've got a raider. Actually, this is a raider ship. Okay, awesome. Um, so we are going to, as you can see, the Union has put on a Gulf blockade against us. Uh, but they have shipping that's coming through the Gulf of Mexico. 
these are raters. Why don't we put these in this box and have them try to raid Union shipping? Now, you could put them here and also have them run the blockade. Um, but, you know, for these guys, let's just try this out. You know, uh, as the Southern player, it doesn't matter so much what you're doing uh, naval-wise. This will just help a little bit. So we can get a few supplies through or we can cause the, um, the Union not to get supplies through. Great. Now, what else do we have down here at Iberville? These were also on our almanac or our book up here, but we already see them, so let's just take a look. We have an ironclad, so we have the CSS Manassas. We're going to use that ironclad to protect New Orleans from any ships, any Union transports that are going to be trying to get um, troops to land here because we need to protect New Orleans with our lives. As you can see, the Manassas is building. So we know we're going to get it. Uh, I do believe it tells us how many turns it's going to take. Uh, but right now it's fixed. Eight turns. There we go. Um, it will unfix if attacked. It tells you that. But the uh, Manassas is building here at Iberville or New Orleans, if you prefer. Um, it's fixed for the next eight turns. Meanwhile, we have... These gunboats. Now, what are gunboats good for? Gunboats are good for standing in the river and making sure the Union can't just pass things up and down this river. It's a gunboat. It's a light warship. Um, <clears throat> they're not very strong. You can see their combat power is a 12 uh, when we looked at the ironclad. That right now is a 53, but you can tell by this red that it's actually building. By the time that's done, I do believe it's over 100. So you can see these, you know, these gunboats don't really have a chance. Transports, we can take troops on those eventually. Eh, no real reason to do that. And as a matter of fact, we're going to take this transport out of this stack. Now, how do you do that? That's something we haven't done before. Click on this, pull it to the right. It creates its own stack. You see right there. So now this is just called Louisiana Transports. We're going to keep that at anchor. But we are going to move, move the Mississippi Squadron out here into the river, the Mississippi River, that's flowing down uh, out to the Gulf of Mexico. And we're just going to put them right here for now. Now, we'll go into that more as we continue in the game. I just kind of wanted to point that out to you that, you know, we do have naval resources. They're not very good <laughs> but we do have some oh we have a texas squadron here so let's go and look and see what this is about this is another one of these um you know they call them raider ships but they can also run a blockade because they're very fast so we are going to uh, go down here into the gulf of mexico my goodness all hell's broken loose on my map there we go so we're going to go down here and have these guys uh try to run this blockade which means we're going to turn this off. Uh, we're going to give it the special order to evade combat in all circumstances and try to run that blockade. Uh, and then looking up here, we had one more, the Vicksburg Squadron. Okay, this is more gunboats. We see we have transports again. We don't want to waste our transports, um, you know, dueling with the Union. So we're going to pull that out and make that its own stack. So now we just have, you know, transport sitting here. If we get some more, we'll add them to the stack. Um, you see here at Vicksburg, there is a garrison. It's fixed. That's why we haven't been seeing it on our readouts. So we do have some militia. Now looking at the grand tactics here, which is something we haven't done, um, this is Illinois. So, you know, Chicago. We come down here to Cairo. This is where Grant and the Western generals are really going to be launching out of. So the Union has things up here. This is St. Louis. You can't see it. Yep, there we go. St. Louis, which was obviously a very major town for a Western town during this time. You see that the Union already has troops here, and they'll be pushing down. Um, they are going to use Cairo here, Illinois, as a staging area. 
And as we come down, we now have some fixed troops at Memphis. And these are real troops. It's called the Memphis Force. So, you know, you see this is the 1st Tennessee Brigade. It's got quite a few elements. Um, this is going to be a real fighting force. Now, we had talked about J.O. Shelby over here before. Uh, for this turn, I'm going to just leave him here. We do want him to be a cavalry raider, uh, but we'll mess with him in the future. Uh, oh, the whole reason I started talking about this, of course, is Vic Vicksburg is very important, as it was during the actual Civil War. This eventually, U.S. Grant got down here and made his claim to fame by operating in and around Vic Vicksburg in what is generally considered a brilliant uh, tactical campaign uh, where... Uh, Grant really outfoxed the Confederates and put the whole Southern War effort in great, great jeopardy. So we will be defending uh, Vicksburg very strongly. We've got two gunboats. We're going to pick up on their uh, index card here, and we're just going to place them out here into the Mississippi. So if the... Yay, get out there. Come on. You'll see the, the river kind of lights up when we're in the right place. Oh, it didn't do it again. There we go. River kind of lights up. There we go. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, they decided, I guess they want to move out of port and then move up the river. But we're going to, actually, you know what? Uh, let's put them right here. Let's put them right here. I think this is better because we're not just on one branch. I guess if anything came down the Yazoo River, I'll be honest, I have never heard of the Yazoo River. Um, but fine. Uh, this, you know, Make sure the Union cannot send anything down this way through the river. So I think that's it for this turn. I think we've looked at um, everything. Uh, you know, we've looked at all of our, law, our units that are not fixed. Uh, you know, we can turn the land units on again and then just click on fixed. We've looked at all, all of these. Um, I generally like to have them organized here by the better generals. Uh, but in this case, it really doesn't matter. Uh, because we don't have too many of them, and many of them aren't doing anything. So we'll just we'll just have this as combat power of our different units and forces. So with that said, I as I said, I think we've completed everything we want to do this turn. So why don't we resolve the turn and watch this happen? Now we kind of maybe touched on this during when we resolved the first turn. That is when you hit on next turn, uh, the computer, the AI goes through resolving everything for 15 days, for the next 15 days, then it starts over and it starts showing you everything that happened those 15 days. Uh, I will say this, uh, through various patches and whatnot, this resolves all a lot faster than it used to. Uh, I know one of the frustrations with the game early on when it was released is it just seemed to take a lot of time, uh, but now this resolves pretty quickly. So we hit that. Uh, we're going to see the days start clicking by there as it resolves each day. Um, you know, and where there's various decisions, I guess maybe it goes back and resolves it. I don't know how the internals of this work. Uh, but we will start seeing. There we go. So now it's processed all 15 days. And it will start doing the WeGo system uh, where. The Union's army and our army are going to be mo me, uh, moving, easy for me to say, moving at the same time. And if they collide, we may have a battle. If not, uh, you know, you can actually do some maneuvering in this game. So when it comes down to uh, cavalry, uh, things like that, I really love a WeGo system. I know Combat Mission, obviously in the early games, has a WeGo system. Uh, but these Aegeod games were, are some of the only grand strategy games that I know of where it's we go. You put in your orders, you tell it what you want it to do, and then it kind of, you know, moves around each day and resolves each day. Um, so now, as we see, it has resolved this day, and we can kind of, there's a lot more going on in the map. You can tell that this is resolved. Remember our uh, militia? That moved up here to Harper's Ferry uh, during that turn, so that's great. We have our militia up here. It's sitting behind this nice defensible river. It only has 15 combat strength. If anything comes across this way, uh, we're, we're retreating. Um, 
This is great. We've got Joseph E. Johnston has now arrived on the scene. He's been given a commission by Jefferson Davis to take over our army of the Shen... Well, I say take over an army. This is just called Shenandoah Force uh, at this moment. Uh, when Johnston becomes active, we will turn this into the army of the Shenandoah. Uh, hey, look, it's Stonewall Jackson. Uh, these are great portraits I love. As you, you can see that Stonewall, he's got his own brigade uh, that he's in charge of. He's got all kinds of bonuses, sharpshooter, surpriser, charismatic. He's very fast. Uh, so he's, you know, a great, great general, of course. Um, as I told you last time, PGT Beauregard has now moved up here and taken over the Army of the Potomac. So this automatically happened with the game. We've now got an army. It's the Army of the Potomac. You can tell it's an army by this big gold star. Now, we remember last time with the messages, we can only have three armies here early in the game. I think that goes all the way through until we can form cores in 1862, but I may be wrong about that. Regardless, we've only got one now. We can have three. I can already tell you what the three will be. The Army of the Potomac the army of the Shenandoah, and then we'll have an army of the West out here. Um, and that's actually an interesting question that we'll go into, whether we want to form that army of the West here in Memphis, uh, if we think that's the best, or when Tennessee secedes, do we want to come up here and form it in Nashville? Um, and I do believe Tennessee has seceded because it's all lit up here, but let's go through our messages for this turn. Uh, yep, the Union's hasty pull out from Norfolk Rail Yard. Now, C or Na Norfolk uh, Naval Yard uh, has provided quite a boost for us. We've got 2,000 cannon of various ca uh, calibers, tons of gunpowder, um, and there's the hull of the Merrimack. So. That's cool. Uh, we've taken this over. I guess I, you know, I've played this game a, a bunch of times and I, I, you know, I always take the Soulfolk militia over here to kind of, you know, take over Norfolk. That didn't happen because we moved this over here. That happened because of operation of the game. So I guess I kind of jumped the gun on that. It all turned out the same. Now you'll see we've captured some guns here called Norfolk guns. We also got a supply wagon. That's great. We got some naval engineers, which are currently locked, but, you know, will help us. Here's our Suffolk militia over here. Um, oh, look, we got this cool thing here. We got the CSS Virginia being built, and we have an Admiral Franklin Buchanan that we haven't seen yet. So we'll be going into all that. We're going to go back to the messages and go down those messages. I just, you know, kind of wanted to show you. We've taken Norfolk now. Wanted to show you this all resolved how we wanted it to. We sent our guy down here, uh, our militia over here to Harper's Ferry. We've got that guy. Let's go down and see what happened at Sumter because uh, we actually didn't see this combat resolve. Uh, so we'll probably do that in a message. Oh, yep. So Tennessee secedes. That's great. Uh, more to the cause. Tennessee becomes incredibly important. You have got to hold Nashville. Uh, if you lose Nashville, the Union can really start flowing, you know, as you look. Uh, the Union can really start flowing down here and put Atlanta in danger. I mean, ultimately, you know, uh, Sherman marched across here. Uh, but early in the game especially, you've got to hold Nashville. And it's a big east-west point here. So Nashville and Memphis out here against the Union Western flank, uh, incredibly important. So uh, one thing I will mention about Tennessee is, you know, it's right here on the border of Kentucky, which is still staying neutral. Um, you really want to sit behind the river here, and as you can, push up here, take Bowling Green, because you don't want the Union to have this as a jumping off point. It's a good supply point. They've got rail down here. Um, so eventually we'll be trying to take uh, Bowling Green as the Southern player. And we'll also be trying to put Louisville under pressure. If you can come up here and take Louisville, which will be our ultimate goal, 
It's a size 7 city. As we learned last time, that's out of 20. It's a size 7 city. Very, very important. Um, you really put the, the north under a lot of pressure because now, you know, you can start looking at Cincinnati, which is a very important town, and so on and so forth. But we'll go down that road when it comes up. So what else has happened? Uh, Arkansas has voted to secede. So that's great. We see Arkansas is all lit up now. Uh, you know, Little Rock is also an important town uh, out west here. So we kind of talk about a daisy chain here from Nashville to Memphis. Little Rock is the last civilization, really, uh, out here west. But you're going to use that to push and help up here in Missouri. Missouri becomes a real battleground uh, for Springfield. And what we're going to be trying to do eventually is pressure St. Louis. Um, right now, the Union has, uh, I believe, Fairmont up here is their commander. Uh, well, we can't see it, fog of war. Uh, but eventually, we're going to try to take Fayetteville out here in Arkansas still and then push up Springfield, Rolla, Jefferson City, and put a lot of pressure on St. Louis and also here from the south, kind of a pincher movement, if you will. Because if we take St. Louis, eh, you've kind of won the war in the west to some degree. So kind of giving you our future battle plans here. Um, when the war began, we had no armaments. Josiah Gorgias has built an extraordinary system of acquisition, manufacture, and distribution of arms and ammunition. That's great. So Gorgias has built uh, some armaments out here. If you want to read more about uh, Josiah Gorgias, he's a big part of the reason that the South was able to even stay in the war. Uh, he was a very uh, brilliant uh, logistician, if you want to say it that way. Um, he really was put in charge of getting armaments to the front. So this is just, you know, giving us a nice little historical pop-up. He's built a steel mill that will eventually uh, help us construct more war supplies. So we're seeing we're getting plus 38 every turn. We have a total of 134. We're going to be using that just as fast as we possibly can. Uh, what else do we have down here? Union troops pulled out of the uh, armory at Harper's Ferry. Again, I maybe jumped the gun a turn <laughs> because I knew we were going to do that. Uh, but they pulled out. Hey, we've, we've got it. We've got Harper's Ferry. Uh, we've got Norfolk, so we're on the march. Our national morale has popped up a couple of points. Um, and I th actually think I'm going to keep this episode a little shorter. We're now into early May. We've played late April, 1861, and now we're into early May. Things are really happening, and there's a lot of stuff that happens this turn. Uh, we've now got the Army of the Potomac. We've got new generals that are on the scene. These guys are fresh off the Battle of Bull Run. Um, we, that's not been modeled here. Historically, this will lead up to the Battle of Bull Run, I guess is, is what I should say. Um, but they have now been commissioned. They're ready to go. We've, we've got a secondary force over here in the very important Shenandoah Valley that uh, we will be turning into the Army of the Shenandoah under Joseph E. Johnston. We've got Stonewall Jackson on the scene. Uh, I should have mentioned over here with Beauregard. We've got uh, James Longstreet on the scene. He's got a great defensive uh, number. He's a 536. That six defensive number is outstanding. Uh, did we look at Stonewall? Yeah, he's a 544. Again, very, very good. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think this is a good place to stop. We'll try to start keeping these to 30 minutes uh, and really trying to play a turn each time. That might not be possible next time because we've just had a whole bunch of things hit the board. Uh, but I'm really enjoying this, this Let's Play tutorial for American Civil War by Agiod. Uh, when we come back, we will play this early May turn and go and look at all this stuff and what it all means. But thank you for joining me here on Strategy Gaming Dojo. If you enjoyed this, please hit subscribe below. I do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.